Brown is Tony Sag, Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs for the U.S. Treasury Department. Let's start right there on that point for LNG because they say there's a lot of holes to fill in. Yeah. But this is now a consistent theme. I mean, he talked about the pipeline when he was with Angela Merkel. He, when he went to Russia, he came out and talked later about how, you know, we're going to send LNG over. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has been a big headline for him. Now he's saying it again. Is there a commitment to getting energy to Europe, and how long do you think that might take? So a very important conversation started, Melissa, and it's great to be with you today. Uh, when we had the president at the G7 make a uh, basically a pitch to the G7 allies that we want a trading relationship with zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, zero subsidies, and that was a conversation we took to our G20 finance ministerial um, counterparts down in Argentina. And then when the EU president came to the White House, a lot of progress was made to begin the outline of what will ultimately be an agreement that's going to have to be negotiated throughout. A big part of that agreement is obviously going to be products like soybeans and LNG. We know that the European market demands more, and it's produced less and we have tremendous resources in this country uh, to produce LNG and I think it's going to be among the very important developments that we'll see come out of a trade deal with the EU. So every time the president comes out and says something good has happened on the trade front everybody poo poos it there's a lot of holes we haven't seen any details blah 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 if you were to use one word to kind of characterize how it's going right now what would you say? We're leading we're leading the conversation I think it's very important that for the first time in nearly 40 years the United States is actually taking control back of, of the way we are treated with our trading partners. And look, the president's been very clear about this. We want free, fair, and reciprocal trade. We have the largest trading market in the world. We give very generous terms to our trading partners. We want the same in return. In, in the case of what the president talked about at the G7, having a relationship where there's zero tariff or zero tariff, non-tariff barriers without mm -hmm. subsidies, that is really a very game-changing idea that no one had previously discussed. So when we talk about trade today, and look at the GDP number, 4.5 one percent. Nearly a percentage point comes from the fact that we've reduced our trade deficit yeah. in the time uh, Donald Trump's policies have been enacted. So I think it's a very important moment in which the uh, United States is leading again and not following bad trade deals. The swamp, whether it's here in the U.S. or it's over in Europe, everybody you know who's used to being in power is used to being satisfied with the idea of doing nothing. So getting them off the dime to actually do something and make a change is very difficult to do. This is a heavy lift. How much pain do you think the president is willing to endure to get to his goal? How long do you think it takes on some of these fronts? Because obviously his critics are very impatient when you say, you know, look at the farmers. We can't give them money to pick winners and losers if you're trying to offset some of the pain. Well, look, the farmers are being unfairly targeted by our trading partners, and to the degree they are. Lots of industries are, though. How, we, how we, we, are, we are willing to support them in the short term, but the, the larger term is to open the export markets to our products. Melissa, we never have once have said, take? well, listen, we're willing to negotiate, we're, we're willing to push for American workers, American products, and American companies to have a level playing field. There has not been a president of either party, candidly, in a very long time who's been willing to take this leadership. You, you don't have to convince me. I thought all along that all of these things, the tariffs was a way of getting back leverage where we had not just given away our leverage for free in the past. The problem is it's so entrenched in the short term. You know, it's hard. You, you've got to show some results so, in order to get people on board. Where do you think you see the first result? Where do you declare victory and give people a taste of what's a, to come? A successful renegotiation of NAFTA, the secretary. That would be first, you think? I believe that's going to be okay. uh, certainly our top priority, and it's, it's something that we've made great progress on. You see with the EU the broad strokes of an agreement in which the first phase is going to be to start eliminating some of the existing tariffs and then open the markets. And that's exactly what we've been trying to do all along is expand these export markets where American products and American companies can evenly compete in those places. We have very open markets here for, for our partners, Melissa. Yeah. You know that. So we just want the same reciprocal terms in, in, in response. Amen. Amen. So we believe that'll grow the economy. Good for everybody involved. We're out of time. I wanted to ask you about the tariffs, though, because you are, I mean, a lot of people don't know that Treasury is in charge. I'm sorry. Sanctions. They, sanctions. Treasury is in charge of imposing sanctions on people. You heard uh, the <laughs> president. Right. I mean, it's a huge job between that and the trade. You heard the president talk about this uh, Iran and mm -hmm. say that he talked to them anytime, anywhere. What's your impression of the pressure that's being put on them through those sanctions we, right we, now. We've effectively used sanctions in North Korea. It brought Kim Jong-un to the table. We've effectively used sanctions in Venezuela, in Syria, all over the world, Russia. in Iran right now. We're in Russia, of course. And, you know, we feel that this is a, a very important tool. And the president has really changed the paradigm of these conversations. We're now in a position of strength. And I think his leadership is really beginning to pay dividends. And we see it in North Korea and perhaps in Iran.
Tony, thank you. Come back soon. Appreciate it. You're Thanks, busy, Melissa. though, so you got a lot to cover there. Happy to come back yeah. anytime. Connor.